So, I'm conflicted as shit, guys. I don't even know where to begin. This game did a real number on me. Like, ugh. And I can't say because it was good, because there are just some parts of this game that just fall short for me. You have this story-driven game that doesn't do a good job at telling the story. And that's all it has, the, like, the game has going for it is story, and it's not even really there. So it's just like, what happened, Naughty Dog? <laughs> so, spoilers ahead, because there's a lot I gotta talk about, and a lot of it's story-driven. Sorry, so if you don't want any of uh, that story stuff revealed to you right now, because the game just came out, then by all means, skip the video. Uh, but if you've played through the whole game and you're ready to hash out, then, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> like, f where do I start? Um, well, you killed Joel. Um, sorry, straight, forget that. You straight up executed Joel, okay? Like, <laughs> it was just, you didn't just kill Joel. You, like, executed him out of the fandom. It's, it was that bad. It was that bad of a move. First, let me just say that the game isn't all bad, but for the lifespan of this game, and this is the end result through like its whole year throughout development, I can't say that I'm fairly pleased. Uh, the game took six years to make. Six damn years. And for what? What took so long for a team of veteran professionals to produce this story-driven game? I'm sorry, wait. I think a lot of those veteran creators and artists left the studio. And you replaced them with people whose only experience was movie creation. I heard that was a lot of... Uh, I, thought, I, I heard that as a rumor. I'm not sure where I read it. But I remember seeing that a lot of the old members from Naughty Dog Studio, uh, they left, some were replaced, and they filled the seats with people who only experience in 3D animation was from making movies. And I think... This game speaks volumes about that. But to me, at least. The game is beautiful, don't get me wrong. Probably one of the best games to ever look at. Like, probably, and like, I don't even have a PS4 Pro. So like, and my graphics were still pretty out there and they were great. Like, but, but being pretty only gets you so far. So they killed off Joel. And make you go on this revenge story with Ellie. But they also make you play as Joel's killer, Abby. Now, I think Naughty Dog was trying to get me to hate this character, and they wanted they wanted me to feel hatred toward her for killing Joel. But what happened, I wasn't mad at Abby. I was mad at Naughty Dog. <laughs> I actually liked Abby, believe it or not. Um, playing as Abby, I think, was a little more entertaining than it was for Ellie for me. Um, And I think when, if I'm having a more fun time playing as the killer than the main protagonist from the previous game, Ellie, on a game whose whole concept is a revenge story, then I think there's a problem there somewhere. <laughs> I think this is definitely explained or shown by the characters, especially in their reactions and stuff with each other in the game, but it, it just seems pointless. I don't know. It's, it's just kind of... Why tell the story? I mean, I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh. oh, no, that didn't come out right. Um, the morals are... I already know the morals. I've, I've heard these moral stories like over a hundred times. It, to me, the story wasn't that new, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, one of my other main beefs with the game is not the story, but how it's been told. Uh, for instance, you play as Ellie in the beginning, and then you play a small portion of Abby, but then in the first half of the game, you, you're, back at, you're back as Ellie. And then you get up to this Mexican standoff in the theater, and then the game just pauses right there and makes you play through Abby's experience, like, full throttle. Like, they stop the, at this really big climax and just take you back to the start. I'm just like, 
what? You're really gonna just take a break right here? And it, it was so frustrating. When I started playing as Abby, I thought, okay, we're gonna get like her perspective on things now. And I thought it was gonna be short, but I don't know. They'll make you replay all three days that you had that you were playing with Ellie. And I thought that was ridiculous. I thought it was too much. I think Naughty Dog could have told a better story instead of dumping all of Abby's character on us at, like, as, at that climax in the theater. Um, I think what they should have done was broken up Abby's story with Ellie's story in between. Like you would do one chapter of Ellie and then it would take you back and then you would do one chapter of Abby. Like it would still stay within that, the first day in Seattle or the second day in Seattle. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do, oh, you're gonna do all of Ellie's and then you're gonna do all of Abby's. No, it was just a terrible way to tell the story. And it, honestly, it like, it made the game longer than I think it really needed to be. Um, Cause when I got to that final confrontation at the theater, I thought, this is it. It's gonna be over soon. But no, once you have that boss fight with Ellie, you're only finished with like 75% of the game. They make you do this whole uh, epilogue or something, and it's just, which just seemed almost unnecessary at that point. Um, and that's another issue. The story doesn't seem to know when to stop. <laughs> like, it, it goes all over the place. Like, if it's trying to break the mold with traditional storytelling, I'm sorry, but like, that's, there's a reason traditional storytelling works because there's a formula to it. But you guys were like, setting, plot, rising action, climax, more setting, more plot, climax and then it's, it's just all over the place it's just stick to the formula it's not that hard <laughs> did you go to college for this <laughs> yeah she she travels all over the city fighting hundreds of armed men and women not to mention the infected and she's killing off people there one by one and the friends that she brought along with her like died jesse died he's gone and i and for a moment i thought tommy was killed too and i was like well f this like this whole this this whole trip better be worth it. Two of my two of my companions that followed me just f***ing died. And so it's just like, uh. but then they just let Abby leave after that. Like after all that, they just let Abby leave after after going this whole through the whole city, tracking down all these people, killing them. You just leave. You just leave the main person who did the deed, and just killed him. You killed their accomplices, but you didn't kill the main person. So it's just like. What is, what is that? What kind of revenge story is that? I don't, I don't get it. <sighs> and then after that scene, they take you to Dina's farm. And, you, and Ellie tries living her best life with her, but Ellie can't seem to think, let things go. And so she sets out again. Like, again. Like, you're trying to, you try and forget and let it all go, but you just set out again. And I'm just like, why? Why, why take this break? Why take, it, it just takes a weird pause for the story and I just don't understand it. Um, it just seems to me like they tried to put you on pause or something. They, they wanted you to, they almost made, they almost made all that effort that you put into all those hours of the game meaningless. Um, Abby even has a similar moment, uh, where you go through all this trouble of getting to the hospital so she can get surgical equipment for a kid that she just met. Who's an enemy, by the way, that she's been trained to treat as an enemy for like, I don't know what, four years? That's a long time treating somebody for an enemy for four years. And yeah, they're just kids. She gets that. But she really goes out of her way to help these kids. But then at the end of it, like she, she, she goes through hundreds and tons of people. She's going up and down these buildings. She faces her worst fears of heights just for this one kid. And then she even fights off probably the like worst craziest infected case I've ever seen, which the model viewer called it the Rat King. It was, that, that thing was up. That thing gave me, gave me nightmares, man. That thing was scary. She goes through all of that and the kid ends up dying anyway. What was the point? What was the point of going through all that when the kid just dies? I don't get it. Do you? Because I don't. <sighs> so when I was playing as Ellie, I found out Abby was possibly, uh, when I was playing as Ellie and found out Abby was at the aquarium, I had already grown pretty tired of the game at that point. I was like, 
when's this gonna end? I was kind of waiting for it to end. I was like, all right, I'm gonna. I'm, my mentality was like, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to the uh, aquarium. I'm gonna find Abby. And we're gonna have the final confrontation, and that's that's gonna be it. Because by the time I was, I but the level where you see it in the horizon, like you're already thinking, like, man, I've played so much of this game already. There's no way it could go on any longer. But that point in the game, that's that's like halfway. You're halfway there, and that's it's already a big chunk of the game. Um, like the death of Joel. That was the only thing that was keeping me motivated so far. And honestly, the only thing that it was pushing me to finish the game was to see if Naughty Dog's decision to kill off Joel would be justified. Like, that was the only thing keeping me going. Like, I had to see what was going to happen in the end, because I'm just like... <sighs> like, whoa, you just killed off that main character? I gotta I got find out why. Is I got to. And honestly, I don't know how I feel at the end of it, because I don't feel like it worked. I just don't. There's this ongoing theme in the game where you have to get somewhere and you start super far away from it. Like you can see your destination on the horizon and they do this like at least 15 or 10 times. And by like the seventh time, I was already like, oh my God, really? Cause like, I already know I'm gonna see the destination on the horizon. And I already know that there's either infected, a faction NPC enemy, uh, or a puzzle platform that's gonna get in my way. Like, I already knew that, like, it, and it was gonna happen. So, you're gonna have to slew your way there, and this must have happened to me at least every level, and by the seventh time of it happening, I just felt, ugh, I have to get through this now? When is it gonna be over? Like, that's how I felt. I felt like I saw a destination, when I saw the, the destination in my horizon, I didn't think, ooh, that's exciting, I can't wait to see what I'm gonna go through there. I was like, ugh. Am I gonna go through now like that's how I felt like it wasn't a fun journey that's all I can say like my whole and if my whole mentality of when is it going to be over is happening throughout playing this game then where's the fun like what's happening I'm not really having a fun time playing something that's supposed to be fun or engaging I hated Dina. Not because her and Ellie were a lesbian couple or anything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an anti-phobe of anything. There's no BS there. I just didn't like Dina. I didn't. I thought her character was this snarky, up-nosed, conniving person. She was this wishy-washy personality type. She was having Jesse's baby, and I think she dated like two other people on the f***ing town before she was dating Ellie. So at that point, I'm just like, oh my god, this woman. Ugh. Ugh. I think she only started dating Ellie, really, because she was trying to make other boys jealous in Jackson. That's how I felt. She just seemed like a terrible person to couple with this badass character that Ellie was. Um, she wasn't good enough for Ellie. That's what I think. That's what I think it was. She just wasn't good enough for her. <laughs> and as Joel put it, she was lucky to have her. And I feel like, I feel like that, that's clearly what it is. Like, Dina was freaking, she was reaching in that relationship. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> it's really hard to introduce a new character and people to like her in any kind of way. Like, I'm sure maybe there's some people out there who somehow identified with her. But as for me, I'm just like, I looked at this woman. I'm like, I do not like her. I don't like her one bit. I mean, Ellie is clearly the bottom of the relationship. I don't care how you like spin it. <laughs> Dina, I think she just takes a, she just takes advantage of like Ellie's naiveness and the whole girl on girl relationship. And that's 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 what they were projecting to me. That's how I felt about it. Because Ellie was too nervous to like do anything, whereas Dina's like doing everything in public and shit like that. I think Dina just saw how strong Ellie was, and she enjoyed toting her around and making her feel uncomfortable. And and that's not a couple, okay? That's just that's just a jerk. Dina's a jerk. Don't make her significant other feel uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, and then like Ellie was fooling around with some cat girl too. Like, uh, I know not that kind of cat girl, but she's mentioned in her journal. And there's even a scene where Dina kind of rolls her eyes at the mention of this cat girl. Um, and she seems to know all about this other person who we don't see. We just hear about him. 
and she she just she she acts like she knows all about Cat, and I'm just like, well, what happened to this girl? What happened to this girl that Elliot was kind of having a fling with or exploring her sexuality with? I, like, like I think I'd rather see this Cat person than see Dina. That's that's how I feel. I don't I don't know about you guys. Just, just whatever. I almost feel like Dina went out of like her way on this whole trip just to like know that Jesse would follow and end up killing her husband so she could be romantically involved with Ellie forever. Like that's how mischievous I feel this person was. Just that she would bring this whole other person along on the trip knowing that they would follow and knowing that they'd end up possible their chances of dying were much higher. Like that's how I, that's how bad I feel like this character's design was. It's just she just she rubbed me the wrong way. I don't like her. I didn't. I didn't like Dean. I just whatever. Just whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so enough about lesbian revenge adventures. Because at the end of the day, who cares? Who cares if it's in the game? I don't. It's not something that's really going to make or break my game, like ever. Ever. That's not what games are about, you know. Um, but apparently gonna create a bad turn uh so they're living on a farm together near the very near end of the game and i just have to question why come back here why have this scene why come back here if she's just gonna if ellie's just gonna go out again i didn't get it and the whole scene actually reminded me of uncharted 4's uh epilogue with nathan drake's kid because like that scene they were all in a house they were exploring what their lives were like and stuff like that and i got the same vibes from there and i felt like i felt like okay you could end it here i guess i wouldn't have been happy if they ended it there but they could have they could have ended the game right there and they could have had another setup for like anything else really they could have played off anything from there but they didn't Instead, Ellie goes through, like, some post-traumatic stress disorder. And even created some bad scenes for me. Like, watching watching Ellie's post-traumatic stress disorder scenes was, like... Oh, that was tough to sleep that night, guys. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like, when she moved the shovel and then just Joel's like... Bruh! Like, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and then, like, just the scene where her mind is telling herself an entirely different story. Where Joel's shouting for help when... When we saw that he didn't actually do that, but in Ellie's mind, he was. And like that was like a whole thing for me. So I'm just like, ugh, oh my god. Um, it just created tension. It created a lot of tension. And that 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 was really good. But I didn't I felt like the placement of this really good scene was in a bad spot. Like maybe that whole scene could have just been a dream Ellie was having when she was unconscious or trying to sleep. And it, it could have been a really good dream sequence where she's on this farm being really happy about life in general. But then she goes for post-traumatic stress disorder and, you know, then she wakes up. And she's like, oh shit. And like having this dream would not at this moment in time would not only motivate the player to continue on the revenge sequence, but would also give Ellie's character drive to like, yeah, I have to go kill these people. I have to go end it. I gotta, I gotta go get my justice. But no, instead the story keeps like pulling you back and pushing you forward. And the pacing was just weird. It was, it was terrible. So why go back there again? To show the viewer like, hey, she she tried to let it go, but she just couldn't. Just try. Is, is that what they were trying to show? Is it, like, because that's what I find confusing. Like, the audience, if you're trying to show, okay, because I'm sure there's that portion of the audience there that's like, oh, she should just let it go. She should just let that person be on her way. She's going through so much, but she doesn't need to. She could she could go be happy on a farm with Dina. And then I suppose this is the developers being like, yeah, this is what it would be like if she did that. But she would probably have a lot of, she wouldn't have closure. She wouldn't have a lot of stuff. So she had to, they had to give us that scene in order to like make us continue. Because in all honesty, like when I got to that scene, I was like, 
this is it. This is this has got to be game over. This this can't be anymore. But there was. Like, this game is just Ellie letting Abby go. Not once, but twice. Twice. Were, I didn't, were they, were the writers trying to get you, like, to get that same emotion that you were when you had the confrontation in the theater about letting her go? Because for me, I'm like, you can't, you can't replicate that in... In the, in the time frame you have for this whole game, you can't replicate those emotions with a shorter sequence. I just, I don't understand the mentality behind that. It's almost like one team worked on this portion of the game, while another team with an entirely different mindset of where the story wanted to go worked on the later half. Which I sort of feel like might have happened because Naughty Dog's not the same studio anymore. Like, a lot of its old members, they're they're gone. They're not there anymore. The people who made the first Last of Us game, they're, there's probably like 25% of those people left in that studio. Everybody else is new. I was, I was told they got people that made movies to make this game. And I think it shows. Like, I'm starting to feel like a game, a video game may have not been the best medium for this story. Maybe a book, or a TV series, or a graphic novel, but not a video game, because you didn't pace it good. And not, not to mention all the flashbacks, like, holy sh**, like 75% of this game is just nothing but flashbacks. Like, a whole second part of the game could be said it was just a flashback. Abby's story could be said it's just a flashback. And when you have flashbacks within flashbacks, that's just a recipe for disaster. It's just not going to work. <laughs> you can't have a flashback within your flashback. It's it's, it's bad writing. I think even I think even novice story writers would know that. They they would know that. Oh, we're already going back in time. There's no point of going further back in time. Maybe I don't know. Like I said, I feel like it would have been better if they just laced Abby's story in intertwined with Ellie's a little more, and they just they. You played one person's story and then the next right after. There wouldn't be a day one, day two, day three thing. Um, I mean, the real effect, powerful effects of a flashback is like getting... It's supposed to be used as a device that like lets you inform the audience about information that's probably critical that hasn't been shown yet. But if you're constantly feeding them flashbacks, then it's kind of like, well, why bother setting the setting here when you could be telling the story over here and making, and then, yeah, like, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, why didn't you just make a game, like a prequel in the past that would lead up to the events of this one and would pretty much hype up the audience for the third game? Wouldn't that make more sense? I don't know. Now, so I was I was pretty confused in some of the flashbacks too. Like, um, there's a part where I'm playing Abby's story, and I couldn't. I got confused. I couldn't remember. I'm like, wait, am I? When did this happen? What day am I on? Um, who's dead? Um, am I? Is this before I joined the wolves? Pre wolves? What? I couldn't understand it. And the only hint I really had was the look of char of the character themselves, like how they were changing throughout each flashback. And I don't know, it just it got confusing. I didn't, I couldn't follow it. Um, like yeah, there was just a point where I'm playing as Abby, and I'm like, wait, is this a flashback or am I in the present? And I was technically in the present, but due to the game's pacing of the story, I was also in a flashback. Confusing? Eh? Maybe? Yeah? I don't know. Um, I think that's all I have to say about the story. I feel like the ending was... Okay. Like, it wasn't too bad, but... It wasn't great either. Overall, she has... Like... 
Ellie has this memory of Joel and her on the porch during their little feud and they're coming to terms with what Joel had done in the first game and she's having this flashback this memory as she's just about to kill Abby like for good and she sees this peaceful Joel a happier Joel and she can finally let it go not forgive Abby but come to terms with his death not to mention if we get into the topic of justice like if we go to the very end of Abby her hair is cut she looks sickly compared to her like beefed up uh, appearance um, the Rattlers really did a number on her like she'd been captured for months months it took Ellie months to like just get down there to California and go find her like so she was captured for a very long time and those Rattlers I already noticed they weren't very good people they were keeping like slaves and shit that's not cool they were just doing whatever the hell they wanted to the people that they captured. And God only knows what terrible things they did to Abby in those months. So I feel that at that moment in the story, I feel that the punishment had fit the crime at that point. Joel's death at her hands had been paid. Yet all this is off camera, so you know a normal viewer might not feel that way. I, I, I feel that way. I can I can look at that situation. I can analyze and be like, oh, yeah, dude, she's probably been through hell right now. She looks terrible. But I don't know if uh, average viewer would be able to catch that. Did you? I don't know. It's all fine and dandy. It's a decent ending with a moral about how revenge isn't worth it or... How the person you're avenging might not might may even think that you're going too far at a certain point. But at the end of the day, Joel's dead. Which is a story element that not a lot of fans agree with. <laughs> like, oh my god. You don't need to kill a character off, just that way another character can have a spotlight. I think part two could have gone a couple of different ways, but with the way that it did, I'm not too happy with it. Um, like, why kill Joel? The whole charm of the first game was going on a journey and building this companionship and, you know, and, and just seeing this companionship with two people who didn't hardly know each other and they had different thoughts and feelings about the world in general that they were living in. And the first game just had this great parallel with an older person and a younger person and their perspectives and how they could come together and even enjoy each other's company. Which I feel, in like our current society, seems rare in media. As a majority of what we see in social media, like, we just see this feud between older generations and the younger generations, and there's like memes about it and shit, but like, it was a great game. That game was able to like, capture all that and like, put you on this journey. It was, it was great. It was a great game. But part two game that I feel didn't understand its fan base all that well and there's this underlying problem throughout where the game just makes you go and do a task or a challenge and then it takes that away from you two scenes later well like whatever you just did it says like nope too bad we're gonna tell the story how we feel like it the game just puts you through the ringer. Like, it's exhausting. It can't even properly reward you for the tasks and challenges that it, like, sets you out to do. Um, and I feel this is what happens when people who make movies instead of games make a game. So, they don't know the proper balance of rewarding the player and the amount of challenge to give them for doing so. Like, that's how I felt in the majority of the game. Like, they were, they were putting me through this test, through this challenge, and by the end of it, or by the end of a level, I felt like, okay, is that it? Is this all I get? 
It was just exhausting. I couldn't couldn't handle it. <sighs> on top of that, on top of all that, there's like there's not a lot of new features in this game that weren't like present in the first one. Um, all the weapons that we use between Abby and Ellie, I'm pretty sure they were in the multiplayer version that was in the first game. Like, I remember using a flamethrower and I'm pretty sure there was a crossbow there and there were automatic rifles. So I just can't imagine those were too difficult to bring into the game. Like, they have the blueprint already, they just need to tweak it to a new engine, right? That's all that should be done. But I think that was the problem. A lot of workers who worked on the first game, they aren't there anymore. They left. The people who knew what needed to be done probably weren't around anymore. So the company probably had issues where they were trying to add old stuff in, but ended up having to build it from the ground up instead. Like, I feel that's what happened with the company of Naughty Dog. Usually you see when there's a sequel to a game, it's an improvement of the first game. They build it up and add more things. They didn't have time to like fine tune into the second one. That's usually what sequels do for video games. Maybe not movies. I don't know about that. Like movies have a hard time doing sequels. That's actually kind of the opposite of what they are. Like movies and sequels, they usually aren't as good as the first one, but then like video games, the sequel's supposed to be better because you're supposed to have learned from your first one and then prove upon it. Like, that's how that works. <sighs> but when I think about the first game and then the second one, what do they really add? The ability to go prone? Yeah, that's new and it was extremely helpful. Especially with tall grass. Tall grass, I guess that was new. They gave us the ability to hide. Um... But when I think about the game mechanics themselves that they added, nothing that big comes to mind. I think the truth of it is all the improvements are in the, like the little details. This is this is where Naughty Dog really shines. They they really added a lot of great little details. Like Naughty Dog really wanted you to feel emotion with this game. They wanted you to feel something. They wanted to pull at your heartstrings just for the hell of it. That's what I feel like they wanted to do with this game. They wanted you to feel bad for taking out NPC enemies. They wanted you to be able to watch the fear in their eyes as you like start choking them out in your arms, you know, like, cause a lot of it is pretty brutal to watch because it looks so real. These little details are fine and dandy, but they grow pretty normal to you by the time you're midway through the game. Like, they're great to appreciate, but sort of lose their novelty when you're sneaking around clickers or shooting en enemy NPCs for like the 15th time. They sort of just soak in as a norm, almost. Um, the AI was probably improved a little by the first game too, but I wouldn't say by much. I only had one instance, one instance, just one, where I was playing as Abby and Lev was following me. I cut across an enemy and I hid and they didn't notice me. I was like, oh, whew. But Lev was following my trail and the NPC spotted him and totally blew my cover. He went into alert state. And what was cool about that was uh, when I took when I was taking for cover, Lev took cover, and then Lev Lev actually said he was sorry that he blew it, and then Abby was responded with like, "Hey, don't worry about it." That actually happened in the game, and it wasn't a cutscene. That was just gameplay. Like little details like that, that make a game go a really long way, like a long way. That that's impressive, I think. Um, also, like. Uh, compared to the first game, the first game lets you kind of think it's a, like you have choice in the matter, but you really don't when it comes to level design. Like the first one, you had to get from point A to point B. That's what this whole game really is. Get to point A to get point B. Excuse me. To get to point A, point B. And like the second one, part two, definitely let you, it gave you more options from getting to point A to point B. And I thought that was great. Like if you like, 
some levels you had to fight in the first one you just had to there was no way of getting around they didn't they didn't give you enough options to get around it, like bad guys and stuff you if you wanted to get around bad guys without confrontation you probably have to sit there for like hours just to wait for this guy's patrol to like move in a spot that was good for you but in part two they give you more options like if part one was a square level design uh part two gave you a circle because they they just let you go anywhere like you could go left right you could zigzag all around they just they let you get there were more hiding spots there was more ways to outmaneuver the npcs and i noticed that and i thought that was another great portion of the game that they added um also the way npcs like they shout out to fellow faction members like when they shout their names like when you gun them down they'll be like rebecca or they'll be like david or something like that and like <laughs> it actually made it actually made my girlfriend feel like bad a couple of times when she was watching me play like and i think that's what naughty dog was trying to do they were trying to like make you feel like bag for like killing all these people that have like they, they wanted the npcs to feel connected and they definitely did a good job doing that um I think that was another cool thing that this game definitely was able to do was that uh, anybody else watching the game, they could just enjoy it too. Like, they didn't have to be playing. They could watch somebody else play and they could still get a kick out of the game. Like, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend, when she first walked in playing the game, she thought I was watching a movie. Like, that's how, that's how good the graphics and emotions of this game were. And I thought, and when, when a game can do that, I think... I think you're in the right ballpark. You're doing the right. You're doing the right thing. Um, so the graphics and the emotions—they're so beautifully captured, and they really immerse you with all those little details that Naughty Dog made seem real. But my, but like by mid-game, uh, my girlfriend she'd already become invested in the story and where it was going, and I started to wait up for her before continuing on to play because we both wanted to see how it was going to end. We wanted to know how, what, what was going to happen in this confrontation between Ellie and Abby and who's going to get justice and what justice meant and all that other stuff. Um, she felt, but near the end though, like she felt conflicted as I was. She didn't really know how to feel about the ending. And honestly, I'm still wrapping my head around it. Um, what else is really new though? Like to the game mechanic wise, I guess they added one new enemy, the Shambler. That guy was new. He kind of looked like a bloater, but I mean, he just, he had more projectiles, I guess, and was less powerful. Um, I'm not sure if the stalker type was a new enemy or not, because I, I can't remember if those were in the first game or not, but they were pretty annoying the way they didn't show up in my listening mode. So I thought that was, I, I can't remember if they were new or not. Um, and then there was the, the, the infected that would jump out of the wall at you. Um, I don't know if you could count that as a new enemy type, but it was definitely a new behavior. I, so I'm not sure if I could count that as an enemy type because they look the same. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's another thing about this game is that the infected, they kind of take a back seat in part two. Like, and honestly, I, I get why. Like, the game is going in a direction of a series. And if the main problem, like, the infected goes away or is cured or is obliterated, then there goes the series. There, there goes your main problem. That's your plot right there. It, it goes away. If if they're not around, people aren't going to fight for your resources. So it's better for a company to focus on people versus other people so they can keep the conflict going and keep stories going. But eventually, you do need to face the problem. Otherwise, your audience is going to grow bored with the content you're dishing out. And this is kind of what happened with the Walking Dead series. Like, people were... They, they focused less on zo zombies became like a environmental hazard rather than the main problem. Um, and I sort of feel like part two definitely was going that way. Like part one is definitely a good introduction to the infected, but like part two, every, everybody's just kind of like, eh, whatever part. Yeah, the, they're around, but our biggest problem is people, which I don't think that should have been, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's okay to do stories like that every once in a while, but like I said, eventually you're going to have to go back to the problem. So I'm hoping future installments aren't just people versus people versus people versus people. Otherwise, it's going to it's gonna get old real fast, really fast. And <clears throat> I don't know if Naughty Dog is going to continue 
with the Last of Us series, especially with all this backlash from the fans. Um, I think they will make a third one, but Naughty Dog has this habit of carrying a franchise for a while, but then starting something else entirely new. Um, Crash Bandicoot, to Jack and Daxter, to Uncharted, to The Last of Us. That's, that's just what they did. Uh, it's kind of what they do. Um, if they do pick up another session of The Last of Us, I'm I'm kind of over Ellie, and even Abby. Abby's new, but I like I don't want to be in this area anymore. I want to I want to go somewhere else. You have a whole United States to go through. Like I want to I want to go explore over there. I don't want I don't want to be with Ellie or Abby or Tommy or whatever. I, I, there's I feel like their stories like just. Put it on pause for a while because I don't, I don't want to go through that again. I just want to focus on somebody else. You want to create, you want to put new characters in and stuff. Make new characters, but don't have them interact with your old characters just yet. Not yet. You got to build that up. That's what. That's that's good story building right there, man. You you have all this potential. You have all these years to like make something. So don't don't rush it. Okay. I know you want to get the hype going really fast, but. You, the way, the proper way to do it is slow and steady. That's all you gotta do. So, I'd much rather see a story where other characters at this point, and I think it'd be much more interesting to see some new characters that are further away from the West Coast. Uh, I just want to see how other people are thriving. Like, we saw the Rattlers, like, they're part of California. They were a fraction, faction there, I guess. Um, they probably wiped out the Fireflies, which is probably why they moved or something, but I mean, like, there's probably like different factions per state capital. Like each state probably has its own factions or two or something that control it. If you think about it. Um, and I want to know, like Night Dog has this whole universe that they created of an apocalyptic world. And I think we've only seen like four states out of 50 of how they're doing. I don't know. But, um, Like, is the American government completely destroyed by the Fireflies? Um, or is... Or are they secretly operating somewhere in one of the states? I'd be... I, like... It had a heavy... They, like... Uh... Federa or whatever, they had a... They had a heavy presence in the first game. Um... And I think it would be interesting to see characters coping with trying to maintain order... Order... In, sorry. Trying to maintain order in, uh... The actual American government, uh, but also struggling with like what's morally right, both as a person, a society, and a nation. Like, I feel like a story like that would be relevant with how split our own society seems to be currently doing. Um, and then there's the rest of the world. Like, um, they may or may not be dealing with the outbreaks. Like, uh, as far as I know, I think like in the first one they gave you a hint that the rest of the world went to. <laughs> but I mean, like, uh, for all I know, the like, all outside source conversations, they're not present with anybody else in the world, I'm pretty positive. Like, we we have no idea what the rest of the world's like. We just, we think it's, like, gone to sh We don't know. We haven't, there's no real evidence yet. Um, so I think, I think exploring another part of the world would even be interesting in how they're dealing with their own outbreaks and stuff. Um, maybe American leaders left in our... They're sitting pretty somewhere in some other state, and uh, along with the rest of the world. And then maybe the people that are in the United States that were left behind to fend for themselves, they they find out and they're, they'll get angry. And then like you know, like I don't know. That is a story idea. I'd like to see it. It'd be cool. <sighs> Point being, uh, Night Dog has this whole universe that they made. It's apocalyptic, and one of the appeals of an apocalyptic type game or setting is imagining what you yourself would be doing in apocalyptic world um and what kind of skills or weapons you would carry like i think that's the charm of like apocalyptic stuff because like what else is there to it no one really wants to live in that kind of world it's, it's really bad you know <laughs> um but i doubt i doubt naughty dog would get close to anywhere an idea like that where it's more of an open world because they're a story-driven based company. They always have been. Um, I think, yeah, that's what they're focused on, is on story. So I don't think, I don't think anything like that will be coming. But, I mean, just explore other, 
other parts of the United States. That's all I'm saying. Go do something else. You don't need to keep focusing on Ellie and Abby. And now, since you killed off Joel, it's just like... Yeah, what's the point of hanging around Ellie and Abby? You, you told their stories. It's time to move on, right? I don't think I, I don't think I could handle an Ellie without Joel in the picture. I don't think I could. I, I don't. I might not want to pay for that. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I. That's all I gotta say about Last of Us Part Two. Um, it's a game that I feel conflicted about. But was okay, I guess. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 7. Bye.